Hi, I'm Caroline Bateman. In an earlier video, I've explained what text-to-speech is and given a couple of examples of where it can be used. And now I'd like to explain why and how it can really benefit dyslexics and those that struggle with reading. If, for whatever reason, a child struggles to read, school is tough. Here's why. School, to begin with, is all about learning to read. And then once a child has learned to read, it's all about reading in order to learn. Now, given the majority of students don't struggle with reading, this is an efficient model for transferring knowledge. But if for whatever reason a child does struggle to read, it can be disastrous. Here's what happens. Now, this negative spiral is to do with literacy on the whole, but let's look at it from the point of reading. Children compare themselves to their peers, even when they're very young. And if they're struggling to read, but their peers are not finding it difficult, they start to feel bad about themselves. And this in turn makes them anxious whenever they've given the opportunity to read and that anxiety makes them struggle with reading. So we see that there is a negative spiral. Unfortunately, this can result in the student starting to believe that they're not very intelligent because they're mistaking their problems with literacy for low intelligence. And this is not the case. It's possible for a student to write quickly and legibly with perfect grammar and spelling, but not have anything innovative, creative or useful to contribute. When it comes to higher education and the world of work, the quality of thought is far more important than writing skills, even in careers like journalism. What's even worse, many of the adults in these children's lives also believe that they're not very capable because they struggle with reading. And as a result, this happens. We see an attainment or achievement gap. When dyslexics start school, this is really not obvious because they're not expected to read. But as time goes on and learning becomes more dependent on reading, the gap can widen. When they get to secondary school, the problems are magnified. And I want to give you an example from my own family of where this could be really detrimental. In England, students are expected to take GCSEs when they're 16. Most students take between five or 10 GCSEs. Some are compulsory and others, they have a degree of choice. Every student needs to study English literature. And as you would expect, there is an awful lot of reading involved. A novel, a play, poetry, and the corresponding study guides. Science is also compulsory. The syllabus for GCSEs is contained in these three books. Each of these books has about 400 pages and each page contains complex vocabulary and processes that students need to be able to understand and recall. Students also have the ability to choose and very often dyslexics choose to do subjects like history, geography, art, psychology, sociology, all of which require a great deal of reading. Now you could say, why read textbooks? Why not just use their own notes? Truthfully, the same students that struggle to read often struggle to take good notes in class. So if they just rely on their class notes, they're not going to get good grades. To get good grades, students are required not only to read, but to understand the content and to be able to recall and apply this information. Even when students are really capable readers and they can work, read each word perfectly, the effort required to do so makes them slow, so it takes them longer. And for many dyslexics, they have to read the same passage over and over again to comprehend its meaning properly. Revision takes them much longer than their peers, which is horribly demotivating. Obviously, a parent or teacher could sit next to them and read for them. But not only would this be incredibly time consuming for the parent or the teacher, it would be very humiliating for the student. A teenager is far more likely to think their slowness in reading is because they're just slow altogether and give up on achieving academically, which has huge impact 
on the opportunities they have later in life. Personally, I did really well academically. I got a 2-1 in a business degree and I think I'm a competent reader. Nonetheless, when I study now, I use text-to-speech as I read. I do it at a very high speed because I find it helps me focus on the words rather than spacing out and having to read it again. My son found chemistry and physics really easy and straightforward, but he was not capable of reading the books and no teenager wants to ask for help with reading. I often meet children that are really intelligent, but they're held back by their inability to read quickly and understand the content. I've known prep schools discourage text-to-speech, believing that children need to persevere to learn to read. I have some sympathy with this view as reading is a vital life skill, but I don't believe children should be disadvantaged in every subject because they struggle to read. They need to let their natural talent for a subject shine through. If we have a quick look at the achievement gap I talked about earlier, I'd like to suggest that one of the reasons why the gap can be so huge is that dyslexics compare how hard it is for them to revise with their peers and they just see it takes them so much longer and they give up altogether. I've made it my goal to find technology to help reduce this achievement gap. If anything, I want to equip dyslexics so they can show their natural talent and achieve their true potential. And I believe text-to-speech is one of the key technologies that will really help them achieve this. However, I don't want to give the impression that getting students to utilise text-to-speech is always a breeze. I would say the earlier it is introduced, the better, ideally before the student starts to doubt their abilities. Once the pressure of work increases, students will feel way too overwhelmed and defeated to start learning new ways of working. I would introduce technologies to aid learning as early as possible. As students get older, not only does peer pressure and the workload increase, their desire to cooperate and please their parents also diminishes. If the student is familiar with using text-to-speech long before they start formal exams, there's far more chance of them continuing to do so when the serious revision begins. In summary, to achieve their full potential in formal exams, students need to read and comprehend a lot of information quickly. Without text-to-speech, students can give up believing themselves incapable of academic success. Thankfully, free text-to-speech functionality is available on almost any device. I've created multiple videos in this playlist detailing how to access and use this functionality. I hope you found this video useful. Please share it with anyone you know who could benefit and check out our other videos. I'd be very grateful if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as doing so really helps others find the information. If you hit the bell button once you've subscribed, you'll be notified when I create new videos. Let's work together to help all learners achieve.